In this video, we are going to go over a heavy mech which is spread among the Inner Sphere and is one of its staples as a light heavy mech. Today, we're going to go over a product of the Succession Wars themselves in many respects, and another design originating from the arms industry of the Free Worlds League. The Quick Draw. A heavy mech weighing in at 60 tons, this battle mech was originally produced in 2779 one year prior to the collapse of the Star League. The Quick Draw has a strange origin, originally being conceived as a partner or replacement to the Rifleman, another 60-ton heavy. Given how the design turned out, this seems to be a very strange original purpose. Instead, Technicron Manufacturing would build a heavy mech which is fast and hits hard and would be praised by mech warriors who were given a chance to operate it but did nothing of the original purpose. Eventually contracts would open up and the design would also be constructed by Luthien Armor Works on license. And the unit would find distribution around the Inner Sphere despite mostly being constructed in the Free Worlds League and Draconis Combine. The Quick Draw can fill almost any role, but mostly that of a light heavy brawler, and does so competently, though not perfectly, and would eventually be produced in sufficient numbers throughout its run to be seen in the battlefields of every succession war, all the way through to the grim battles of the Ill Clan era. The Quick Draw never achieved its original purpose, which was to replace the Rifleman, though it instead became a staple of nearly every force of every kind in the Inner Sphere as a generalist during the succession wars. In its most prominently produced design of the era, the QKD-4G, the Quick Draw comes with a VLR 300 standard engine, giving it a maximum speed of 86 kilometers per hour or eight movement points in game. In addition to this, the QKD also comes with a full installment of jump jets, allowing it to leap up to 150 meters. The mobility of its design is key in its popularity among mech warriors and its reputation as a generalist. For heat sinking ability, this model is given an additional three tons of heat sinks, bringing its overall total to 13 allowing it to disperse three more points of heat than a stock design, and giving it more flexibility with its weapon systems and jump jets for heat cycling. For its weapons package, the Quick Draw comes with a series of diverse weapon systems, starting with two forward-firing Omicron 4000 medium lasers and two rear-firing Omicron 4000 medium lasers. To enhance its close-range abilities, the QKD-4G also carries with it four short-range missile tubes, giving it a scattershot ability as needed. Finally, for its long-range capabilities, the QKD comes with ten long-range missile tubes. These weapons in their entirety paint a picture of a mech which can fight in close, can exploit damage components, and can offer light fire support as needed or as a standoff attack, especially with its mobility. To complete our overview, the QKD has 8 tons of armor for defense. This is the Achilles heel for the design, as despite its weapons and mobility, they come at the sacrifice of armor protection. Among the mainstream 60 ton heavy mechs from this era designed for close in fighting, the quick draw will quickly find its protection is lacking under the wrong circumstances. The quick draw 4G can often be seen as a substandard heavy mech in some corners. Though, if used effectively, it can be a reasonable brawler and has the mobility to be a heavy harasser. It can fit into almost any lance during the Succession Wars as well, while contributing to the overall purpose of the lance, either by warding off light mechs attacking to knock out support vehicles or mechs, or being a relatively fast, aggressive mech attempting to do the opposite, or flanking enemy positions with more firepower and physical attack abilities than its lighter counterparts. This is why pilots have come to accept the QKD across the Inner Sphere in most respects, and why it was popular enough that the Draconis Combine would seek to get a license from the Free Worlds League for their own domestic designs. Though this isn't where the story ends for the Quick Draw, as from the Succession Wars to the newest eras of technology, there's a multitude of configurations, and as we always do, we will be covering a handful of those configurations to give an idea of how this platform is altered by its operators or purchasers in order to better suit their immediate needs or the changing face of technology in warfare. During the Succession Wars, the QKD-4H was the primary modification of the 4G from 2847, 
this version of the QKD is designed for more weapon systems to be aiming in the forward arc. The SRM-4 launcher will be swapped into the rear and the medium lasers swapped into the front arc. The next update came in the form of the QKD-5A, which was from the later Third Succession War, which replaces out the LRM-10 for two more medium lasers and four more heat sinks, turning it into a dedicated brawler with no long range ability. This changes the overall function of the unit, but still retains the issues involving its armor protection. During the era of the clan invasion, the QKD-5M is a major modernization package set up by Technicron. It would solve the heat problem by upgrading the 13 heat sinks to 13 double heat sinks, giving it a total of 26 heat sinking capability. It would also add ferro fibrous armor to help mitigate its armor issues, as well as installing a case for its ammunition. The SRM-4 would become a one-shot version of the weapon. Its firepower is reduced, however its armor protection, survivability, and heat management are dramatically improved. The latest version of the Quick Draw that I'm aware of is the QKD-9M, which utilizes the newest Inner Sphere technologies. It comes equipped with light ferro fibers for protection and carries two large lasers tied to a targeting computer. It also comes equipped with an LRM-15 and a Case 2 for the ammunition. The unit also will come equipped with a tag system. It fundamentally changes the unit to a mid-long range unit with enhanced durability and gives it enhanced spotter ability if needed as well due to the addition of the tag. Quickdraw's strength in its original design is its all-round nature, speed, and maneuverability. This gives it the option to enter into any position competently if needed, barring to some extent being a frontline mech in heavier engagements. It also, while brawling, has superb physical attacks which can leave their mark, most certainly. In its variants, it shows the versatility of the platform itself, allowing it to become a more dedicated brawler, or even becoming a long-range support mech which is closer to the original stated but failed role of the Quick Draw. The primary weakness of the QKD series is the fact that it's not dedicated to any one task and can't perform most of them exceptionally, with the exception of being a brawler. Its ability to fill in so many slots or roles means it's not particularly good at having any defined one of them. It also, through most of its designs even when mitigated by technology, has inferior armor to its peers, creating a potentially lethal situation for the pilot and the mech should it become the focus of an enemy's full barrage, and should its speed or another factor fail it, preventing it from escaping or dodging the incoming attacks. Able to be slotted into many roles and able to participate in most forms of warfare, the Quick Draw is a solid, though flawed option as a heavy mech, operating almost like a heavy medium fulfilling multiple roles. Though it failed to replace the Rifleman, it has created its own niche and is a proven, modular platform that has survived the test of time. That, and it can draw a six-shooter faster than any other mech in the Inner Sphere. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. With that, I will catch you in the comments section below.